The following program is brought to you commercial free by Willamette Valley Cancer Institute. I'm Kelly Warner. In the last decade, cancer as we know it has changed in many ways. Scientists have a better idea what makes cancer tick, and new innovative therapies are changing what was once considered a death sentence into a chronic, manageable disease. And more and more people diagnosed with cancer are living with hope. According to the American Cancer Society, there are 15 and a half million cancer survivors living in the U.S. today. And that number is expected to grow to more than 20 million by 2026. That's why the American Cancer Society and so many others are working hard to bring awareness to early detection and research and to help fuel efforts to support survivors in our community. A special group of people are on the field at Autzen Stadium this season along with the Oregon Ducks. Willamette Valley Cancer Institute and Research Center has again teamed up with Oregon Athletics to present Fight Like a Duck, a campaign to celebrate local cancer survivors and share their inspiring stories of hope. The last time Holly Stamper watched a football game at Autzen Stadium, she was in high school. So that was a long time ago. It didn't look like this. <laughs> Holly is part of a group that recently toured Autzen, as well as the Mashofsky Center and the Hatfield Dowlin Complex, the operations center for Oregon's football program. The tour kicked off the second year of the Fight Like a Duck campaign, a partnership between Willamette Valley Cancer Institute and Oregon Athletics, celebrating the strength of those fighting cancer in our area. Cancer, I think, unlike any other diagnosis, is all-encompassing in that it affects many, many, many uh, family members and friends and not just the patients. And so uh, this gives us just a nice opportunity for us to appreciate that and, and uh, recognize that these patients are fighting like our University of Oregon Ducks. This is a bucket list thing for me. It really is. The Fight Like a Duck campaign also raises awareness about the high quality cancer care and latest treatments available in the local community. So I think at any one time we have over 25 clinical trials that are going on in our clinic that are testing new molecules and trying to advance the standard of care for many cancers. So we don't just have chemotherapy anymore. We have many other things that are available to, to treat cancers now. Um, all of which were studied on clinical trials and proven uh, to have benefits for, you know, cancer patients. The group posed for pictures with Marcus Mariota's Heisman Trophy and got a memorable look at the history of Ducks football. It really does make a big difference to a cancer patient because your life is so different. Um, everything has changed. Your financial situation, your, your work situation, everything's so much out of your control. So when you have a situation like this where you can be happy and just be, you know, not worry about that stuff for a little while, it makes, makes a big difference. In addition to the home football games, local cancer patients will also be honored at three pink games during Oregon's volleyball, women's basketball, and softball seasons. A Eugene father of three is proud to be called a survivor. For 10 years, Michael here has been living with a form of blood cancer. But because of the discoveries being made in cancer research, he's alive today. So today, I want you guys to focus on some of the fundamentals, right? Michael here loves the game of football, from rooting for the Oregon Ducks with his family to watching his sons play. Good job. What makes these moments even more special is that 10 years ago, on his 38th birthday, Michael learned he had cancer. So we had two little children at the time, and my wife was pregnant, was eight months pregnant with our third child. And uh, so it was, it was quite a shock. Michael was diagnosed with chronic lymphocytic leukemia, or CLL, the most common form of leukemia in adults. And the first treatments were just regular chemotherapy treatments, because that's all that was available at the time. Those didn't last very long, so there was a need to find something different, and um, we started doing some clinical trials. Dr. Christopher Yasenchek, a medical oncologist at Willamette Valley Cancer Institute, says clinical research trials are revealing more and more every day about individual cancer cells, what makes them change and grow, and how to shut them down. But less than 5% of eligible adult cancer patients participate in trials. It's really unfortunate. We're trying to do way better than that because it's how we are going to make progress. It's how we're going to find more effective treatments, fewer toxicities, better chance of a cure. And we can do that all right here in our community. Michael participated in a clinical trial at WVCI. 
That trial not only worked for him, it led to the drug's FDA approval of a combination therapy to treat CLL. You know, what they're doing with creating these clinical trials and more drugs and more research, um, there's definitely going to be a, a cure or something that will at least hold it at bay for years. Right now, there is no cure for CLL, but promising research is giving Michael and his family the two things they want more than anything, hope and more time. I was told um, that I would probably have five years to live. So this is 10 years later. So I've got five years of extra life out of this and it's completely changed. It's no longer a death sentence. There's so much happening right now in cancer research, specifically for gynecologic cancers. Currently, there are five clinical research trials underway at Willamette Valley Cancer Institute in Eugene, four of them focusing on new therapies aimed at treating ovarian cancer and keeping it from coming back. Dr. Charles Anderson leads WVCI's gynecologic cancer research team. He says over the last several years, clinical trials have identified multiple therapies that are proving effective in treating gynecologic cancers, particularly ovarian cancer. There's been several FDA approvals, uh, mainly in the class of drugs called PARP inhibitors. When cancer cells are damaged by chemotherapy, they require an enzyme called PARP to repair themselves. PARP inhibitors block that enzyme, causing the cancer cells to die. The combination of drugs that we're looking at now are very likely to extend the life of many patients that, that historically would have you know, succumbed to their disease within three to five years that will probably still be alive at that 10 year mark. And we're already kind of seeing that. Ovarian cancer is a tricky disease because it can become resistant to initial treatments and return. That's where immunotherapies may play a pivotal role. And I think the changing landscape of immunotherapy is kind of where all this is going to be headed um, because it's the most effective and dynamic weapon we have against you know, cancer in general is, is your own immune system. Dr. Kathleen Yang encourages patients who have questions about clinical trials to talk with their oncologist. When I talk to patients about clinical trial, um, I, I uh, discuss them as one of the options, but not the only option. And I think that's really important. Once thought of as a last hope, clinical trials are now often a first line of defense, offering patients potentially life-saving treatment options years before they're available to the public. Whenever a patient is willing to participate, we are, we are very grateful for, uh, for them putting themselves out there um, and uh, allow us to test out these drugs that we are very excited, that we think it worked, but we need the data to support it. And if you think about all the exciting drugs that we have uh, in the last several years, all of those drugs, new drugs, have gone through clinical trial. Through its affiliation with the U.S. Oncology Network, Willamette Valley Cancer Institute is able to give patients local access to national and global clinical trials. Not every patient qualifies for a clinical trial, and not every trial drug works for every patient enrolled in a study. But those who participate are the first to benefit when the treatment is effective. To learn more about clinical trials offered locally, head to OregonCancer.com slash clinical dash trials. Every cancer survivor has a story, and Michelle Pearson's is a real conversation starter. It began when she adopted a cat at an animal shelter. She was looking for a companion for her other pets. What she didn't expect was that her rescue cat would soon rescue her by alerting her that she had breast cancer. This is Mia, adopted by Michelle Pearson and her husband about three years ago. And at night, she would always sleep right beside me. I was her buddy, I was her pal. One night, while the couple was watching TV, the cat jumped up on Michelle and started pawing at her chest. And I was like, what are you doing? That's kind of weird, and I pushed her off. She came back, she started pawing and sniffing, and then would look at me. I shoved her off, and I started feeling around, and it was tender, and I thought I kind of felt a lump. After a series of tests, Michelle learned she had breast cancer. It's very aggressive, uh, so we had to get aggressive back. After undergoing surgery to remove the cancer, Michelle received six months of chemotherapy at Willamette Valley Cancer Institute in Corvallis, followed by daily radiation treatments. 20 years ago, people would have thought of it as a death sentence. Now it's not. Now it's like we know exactly how to go after this. We've typed it. We can tell you it reacts to this and this and this. And because of that, we're going to give you these drugs, and then we're going to do this, and it's a whole plan that comes together. The breast cancer research world is, is really focused in a lot of different directions. Medical oncologist Dr. Keith Wells says every day, researchers are learning more and more about breast cancer. 
how to successfully target specific mutations and use immunotherapy to boost the body's immune system. These immunotherapies are showing promise, although they're not quite ready for, for everybody to have them. There's a lot of them are still, uh, still in trials, and it looks like some of the most recent trials that will probably be combining them with, with uh, standard chemotherapy and using that combination uh, to treat breast cancer. Michelle considers herself fortunate for the treatment and care she's received, but also for Mia's keen senses. I don't know why she did it. I don't care. The way I look at it is she made me pay attention to a part of my body. If I would have let it go another six months, I'd be having a much different conversation. So in my mind, <laughs> she's my angel. As you can imagine, Mia is considered a hero in the Pearson house. Michelle says the cat lives a princess life and gets lots of extra treats. Breast cancer is the most common cancer diagnosis for women in Lane County, and it's estimated that one in eight women in the U.S. will develop breast cancer over the course of her lifetime. Regular screenings are key to catching breast cancer early, but not all mammograms are created equal. The last year has been a challenge for Jan Killen and her husband. Right after she was diagnosed with uterine cancer at Willamette Valley Cancer Institute, Jan went in for her annual mammogram at Oregon Imaging Centers, which revealed something else. And they said, well, we really think it is cancer. And I'm just like, how can this be? The silver lining for Jan is that her breast cancer was caught early as part of her yearly screening. The real strength of mammography comes with being able to compare this year's mammogram to the year previous and the year previous to that. That's why annual mammography is so important. Three years ago, Oregon Imaging Centers was the first to offer 3D mammography in Lane County. A machine takes many low-dose x-rays as it moves over the breast. Then a computer puts the images together in a three-dimensional picture, giving radiologists like Dr. Jonathan Sims a better view to spot abnormalities. Since we adopted a 3D mammography here at Oregon Imaging Centers, almost immediately our, our recall rate decreased almost 50%. And what that means to a patient is that they aren't coming back unnecessarily for things that turn out to be nothing. At the same time, 3D mammography allowed us to detect more cancers. Jan credits 3D mammography for catching her breast cancer early. They brought me in, they showed me the images, basically assured me that it was very treatable. So that was comforting. And I thought, okay, I can do this, I can do this. Jan still has a long road ahead of her undergoing chemotherapy and radiation to treat both her uterine and breast cancers. But with the help of her nurse navigator at Oregon Imaging, her care team at WVCI, and her family, she feels strong and confident that she's in the right hands. Annual mammograms are recommended for women starting at age 40 or earlier if you have a family history of breast cancer. A 3D mammogram does not require a referral from a physician, but insurance coverage varies. However, Oregon Imaging Centers believe so highly in the value of this technology that if your 3D mammogram is not fully covered by one of its contracted insurance providers, it will adjust the fee at no cost to you. To learn more, head to OregonImaging.com. Receiving a cancer diagnosis can trigger a host of emotions, from disbelief and sadness to fear and loneliness. Many patients find an outlet for those feelings by joining a cancer support group. Once a month in Corvallis, this group gathers together to talk about the one thing they have in common, gynecologic cancers. The group is one of several facilitated by Project HER through the Corvallis Clinic Foundation. The participants are in different stages of their diagnosis and they share practical information, which may include what to expect during treatment, how to manage side effects, and how to process their feelings and stay positive. It seems comforting somehow to just say, well, this is where I am right now. And others will nod and say, oh yeah, I've been there. All of our groups definitely provide a safe space for the um, individuals who are able to attend. So just kind of that consistent place to come each month, discuss any of their challenges, um, or even just ask questions. When trying a support group for the first time, it's suggested that you attend at least three sessions. At that point, you'll know if the group is right for you. For a list of cancer support groups in Eugene, Springfield, and Corvallis, check out OregonCancer.com slash support groups. Nutrition plays an important role in cancer care. Eating the right kinds of foods in the right amounts and at the right times can make a difference during treatment and in recovery. That's why patients at Willamette Valley Cancer Institute and Research Center have access to nutrition counseling services. 
to help them get the information they need. Well, she might have a, a cooked vegetable in a salad, for instance. As a registered dietitian who specializes in oncology, Shelly Cockler knows the power of proper nutrition. She says eating right boosts your immune system, increases your energy, decreases the risk of infection, and helps you recover more quickly. Unfortunately, cancer treatment can make eating and digestion difficult. Depending on the type of treatment, whether it be chemotherapy or radiation, and it can varies on both the type of chemotherapy or what part of the body is radiated, people can get various um, side effects that diet does play a role in. Side effects such as loss of appetite, inflammation, sores in the mouth, fatigue, and nausea. One thing that often gets affected is the blood counts. The bone marrow gets affected, so the blood counts tend to drop, and the body's trying to repair those good cells. And um, protein is, provides the building blocks for that and calories the energy. Shelley advises patients on adding or removing certain foods in their diet and offers tips on dealing with side effects, like changes in how food tastes. One thing that they experience sometimes is a metallic taste, and so I tell people, eat with plastic silverware as opposed to metal utensils, and that will sometimes help. Because cancer and cancer treatment affect people differently, Shelley creates individual nutrition plans, identifying and treating problems early to help make patients as comfortable as possible. While nutrition is important during cancer treatment, it continues to play an important role in the long-term health and well-being of survivors and for reducing the risk of recurrence. A Eugene woman will be the first to tell you that healthy foods can also taste good, and she's showing you exactly how to prepare it. We're going to highlight a very nutritious ingredient today, the peach. Shauna Hutton is passionate about food. I learned at a very early age the power of healthy food, but also the power of sharing food with other people. Shauna shares knowledge about nutrition and demonstrates how to prepare healthy and tasty recipes through a program called Nourish Food for Life. She leads the free monthly cooking demonstrations for cancer survivors and their families at Natural Grocers in Eugene and for the community at the Lane County Farmers Market in the fall and spring. My favorite part about doing these classes is my connection to the audience. I absolutely love when people come and they sit down and they see what I'm cooking and they instantly are inspired to do it within their own kitchen. Asparagus is really high in antioxidants. It's great for heart health. Uh, it also is great for cell detoxification and it's really great for your digestive system. Really what I try and prioritize within my own recipes is that bridge between what tastes good and what is good for you because it can be the same thing. And if you add flavor and it can be a powerful way to really nourish your body, but also feed your soul. The Nourish classes were born out of Shauna's commitment to Positive Community Kitchen, a nonprofit organization that provides free organic meals to people diagnosed with cancer and other life-threatening illnesses. With the help of teen volunteers, Positive Community Kitchen supports families in the community who are enduring an exceptionally challenging chapter in their lives. For the original five families that we served, and now the hundred families that we serve, Per week. It's an uh, incredible experience for everyone that's involved, knowing that we're not only just taking a meal, we're sending love, we're sending support, and we're sending a connection to the community. For a list of Shauna's monthly Nourish classes, head online to nourishfoodforlife.com. Once there, you can also access recipes and watch videos of her cooking demonstrations. And to learn more about Positive Community Kitchen, or if you or your teen are interested in volunteering with the organization, check out positivecommunitykitchen.org. Exercise is highly beneficial to a cancer survivor's recovery and healing. But exercising when you're dealing with debilitating side effects is difficult, and knowing where to start can be overwhelming. For dozens of local cancer survivors, they're finding help through a free program at the Eugene YMCA. Press, beautiful, using your abdominals. Susan Cowan will never forget the struggle she faced after being diagnosed with breast cancer in 2016. This active mom of a young son found herself sidelined by side effects. I was exhausted from chemo and I couldn't keep up with him. I couldn't run around the block after him. I couldn't chase him. All of these things that I couldn't do. So it really affected for me my ability to be in my family the way I wanted to be. A year after she finished chemotherapy, Susan discovered Live Strong at the YMCA, 
an exercise program designed to help cancer survivors regain control over their bodies. So my goal when I started the program was to get in good enough shape to be able to go on a backpacking trip in Canada with my family. We know that exercise is the number one way to prevent recurrence for cancer survivors. Colleen Glick is the coordinator for the Live Strong at the YMCA program in Eugene. She says the free 12-week program offers cancer survivors the benefits of individualized training inside a group setting. Our motto is start low, go slow. So we want to meet everybody exactly where they're at, give them the workout that's best for them, tweak it through those 12 weeks, and then just watch them grow and progress. Getting regular exercise can help ease common side effects associated with cancer treatment, including lymphedema, neuropathy, range of motion issues, and fatigue. And it was amazing to go through this process with other people and being supported by each other. And I could say, oh, I have you know, these scars, and like, oh, I have that too, or I'm experiencing this, I'm experiencing that too. Over the course of the 12-week program, Susan's strength and flexibility returned. Her range of motion improved, and she got her confidence back. And her dreams of that hiking trip with her family came true. This program changed my life. It completely changed my attitude. I'm connected with my body again. My body is strong. My body is healthy. <laughs> life is very good. The Live Strong program at the YMCA is offered three times a year in January, April, and September. Since it began in Eugene in 2016, more than 100 people have participated. The program does have a waiting list, but if you are a cancer survivor who is interested in learning more, give the Y a call at 541-686-9622 or email livestrong at eugeneymca.org. When Amber Bell learned she had cancer, she worried about more than just herself. She was concerned for her children and how they would handle her diagnosis. The Bells received support from friends and family, and also from the Oregon Cancer Foundation. Three years ago, Amber Bell received devastating news. She learned she had stage four colon cancer. I had no family history of cancer. I was living healthy. I took care of myself. I had just actually run a marathon, and it was a big shock. One of the first concerns for this former school teacher was finding support for her three young daughters. So I called the Oregon Cancer Foundation and I asked, like, do you have a list of, you know, therapists or other people? What resources do you have for children? And Instantly, I got a phone call back, like with a list of resources of people who I could call and camps that my kids could attend. The Eugene-based Oregon Cancer Foundation has continued to be a resource for the Bells, from helping them pay their utility bill through the foundation's financial assistance program to helping Amber feed her family when she isn't physically up to cooking. So they provided freezer meals for us that my children can pull out of the freezer, put in the crock pot, my husband can do it, I can do it the morning before I go to treatment. After her diagnosis, Amber started a blog to help her process the impact cancer has had on her and her family. And it's pretty raw. The blog is very honest. I don't even know who is reading it, and <laughs> but that has kind of stopped mattering to me as much as that it's provided a way for us to share our experience with someone else and hope that it makes a difference somewhere. What's made a difference for Amber is knowing that there are local resources available to support her family in so many ways. And I really feel like that the Oregon Cancer Foundation has looked at us as a, as a family and as a case of not just like, oh, here's another cancer patient, but here's a person who had a life before this that was altered and still has a life <clears throat> and wants to continue to live in a way that is happy for them. And there's no judgment, there's only understanding. Amber has also participated in Oregon Cancer Foundation's Survivorship Series, a free 10-week program that helps survivors address issues and questions that often arise following cancer treatment. To learn more about the Survivorship Series, head to OregonCancerFoundation.org. Caring for a loved one with cancer can be difficult, and often so much of the focus is on what the patient needs that caregivers don't think about their own emotional and physical well-being. Oregon Cancer Foundation has received a $10,000 grant from the OHSU Knight Cancer Institute's Community Partnership Program to help identify and address the needs of cancer caregivers in Lane County. 
OCF is looking for caregivers to participate in a survey to help the foundation better understand the needs of caregivers in our community. Once the results of the survey have been analyzed, the foundation will determine the next steps to create programs and resources to help caregivers. And that might be having Oregon Cancer Foundation run some classes or run some programs specifically designed for caregiver support. It might be you know, creating a resource library so that caregivers can come in and get some more information on their own. It might also be being in contact with some of our community partners uh, who might be better suited to help caregivers out. If you are currently a caregiver or have been a caregiver to a patient in the past, you're encouraged to complete the survey. It's anonymous, includes about 30 questions, and takes approximately 10 minutes to complete. You can access the survey online at organcancerfoundation.org slash survey. This time of year, colorful bras appear in the Eugene Springfield area, decorated by those participating in the Bras for Cause campaign. The fundraiser benefits Oregon Cancer Foundation, which provides financial assistance to patients undergoing cancer treatment in Lane County. For many who participate in Bras for Cause, cancer hits close to home, and this fundraiser is an opportunity to stand strong against a frightening disease. <laughs> Charity Crosby has a lot to celebrate. It's been nearly two years since she was diagnosed with breast cancer. I'm feeling good. I have a whole bunch of energy. I'm cancer free, so that's exciting. <laughs> But this Lane County real estate agent admits that cancer took its toll, physically, emotionally, and financially. In addition to support from friends and family, Charity receives support through Oregon Cancer Foundation's financial assistance program. During chemo, I was only working two to three days a week if I could, um, and it's just me by myself. So I didn't have anybody else that I could rely on to help with the bills and, and paying everything. Charity also experienced Oregon Cancer Foundation's Bras for Cause campaign for the first time. Each year, the community is invited to decorate bras, then the creations are displayed, and folks are encouraged to donate by voting for their favorites. 100% of the money raised through Bras for Cause stays in Lane County, providing support services, education, freezer meals, and financial assistance to patients with all types of cancer. Part of our role is to make sure that they're not having to make difficult choices between um, say getting to treatment and, and the gas that that is going to take and um, putting food on their table or heating their home. And so, we, you know, we work with each patient to figure out how we can best serve them. Last year, Charity and nine other cancer survivors were honored and celebrated at Girls' Night Out, the finale celebration of Bras for Cause. That just kept me going. And just having all that camaraderie and, and everybody else, you know, around me was, it was really a blessing for me. This year, Charity is volunteering with Bras for Cause to support other local survivors. She says it's a fun and colorful way to pay it forward. All of the bras were decorated by individuals and businesses in the community during two Build a Bra events in September. Now all those colorful creations are on display at Dandelion's Flowers and Gifts in Eugene, and voting is open through October 31st. One dollar equals one vote, and you can vote for your favorites as many times as you'd like online at brasforcause.org. And tickets are going fast for Girls' Night Out, the Bras for Cause finale celebration on Friday, November 8th at Venue 252 in Eugene. There'll be dinner, live music, a fashion show, a silent auction, and this year's Bras for Cause winners will be announced. For tickets and information, head to brasforcause.org. All proceeds raised through Bras for Cause supports Lane County cancer patients through Oregon Cancer Foundation. There is so much progress being made in the fight against cancer but we're not there yet. Cancer does not discriminate, and when it touches lives, it becomes a very personal experience. We want to thank everyone who shared their stories in the last 30 minutes. If there's one thing we hope you take away from this broadcast, it's that you are the number one advocate for your health. Early detection saves lives, so don't put off those regular screenings. And we look forward to seeing you at this year's Girls' Night Out event, celebrating cancer survivors in our community with continued hope that the days when cancer changes lives are numbered.